Hello everyone. Welcome to the Programming Best Practices course. In this video tutorial, we'll be going through the details about the coding techniques. So the first aspect of the coding technique is its readability. So what does it mean by readability? Is once you or someone else reads a particular code, the program or code should be readable by either you or by somebody else. So it's, it's a very great aspect of a readability because think about someone you know who is working on your code, your developed code, and it doesn't be so readable, so well readable, okay? So once he first tried to find out the bug, let's say he's working on a bug fix, so he's trying to find out the bug, first of all, he'll find it very difficult to understand what your code is actually doing because he is not able to read your code properly. So the readability of the code is a very good aspect of following a best practices. So the first thing that comes with the readability is your consistent indentation. So you know, no matter how many spaces that you use for an indentation, but use it consist consistently throughout the source code. You know, so just remember one thing that space and tabs they do not mix well. So if you are using spaces, just use spaces for indentation. If you are using tabs, then just use tabs for indentation. But do not mix them. You know, uh, spaces with tabs and all this thing. And the second point is the indent code to better convey the logical structure of your code. Without indenting, code becomes difficult to follow, difficult to read. Okay, so uh, as as we will be you know looking into this particular example, let's say you know we have three piece of code which is doing the same thing, but you know in a different indentation. So so if you look at it, this particular piece of code you know has a different indentation style compared to this one and also this one has a different indentation style so as you can see you know this printf is part of this if but you know the if and printf this starts with the same indentation here also you know this particular bracket you know this particular bracket is part of the else so but this bracket and this bracket ends this is the end of this bracket so but they are not indented properly so if I if I look at this code, you know, if I look at this code, I do not know what is the printf, which printf belongs to which if and which else. And if I look at this code, code, you know, it's very difficult for me to understand that where this particular bracket ends because I do not know, you know, this indentation doesn't tell me that this is the start bracket and this is the end bracket, right? But look at this code, you know, this is properly, you know, written. This is with a good indentation. So I can know that this particular printf is part of this if. And this bracket is the closing bracket for this one. And then, you know, this if belongs to this particular else statement. And this printf belongs to this particular if. And again, this printf belongs to this particular else. So, so by looking into this particular code, you know, I can I can definitely say that this is better than this and this. So this is acceptable. This is not acceptable. Also, this is not accept acceptable. So as you can look into this, you know, so a better indentation is very much essential to make your code readable, and which is one of the great aspect of your coding technique. Now continuing with the readability, you know, uh, we have, you know, two options for consistent naming scheme. So first we have discussed about the consistent readability, enhancing your readability with consistent tab, space and indentation. Now we'll be discussing about the consistent naming scheme. So there are two options. One is the first one is the camel case. The second one is the underscore. A camel case is nothing but, you know, the first letter of each word is capitalized except the first word. So, for an example, you know, let's say this calculate total is one of my function name, okay? Or maybe the validate email address, this is another function name. So, as you can see, the this word calculate, the first 
letter of this word is small since this is the first word but the total the first letter of the word is capital similarly here the e and a which are the the first letter of the word email and address so that is why they are in capital but the v here the first letter is small because it is part of the first word or another approach is underscore many people follow this technique also like underscores you know between like you know you define a function like display matrix this is the your function name or you know a variable with v total amount v underscore total underscore amount so there is a underscore is provided between each words so that helps uh, to make your code consistent in the naming scheme okay uh, so the second point is some developers prefer to use underscores for procedural functions and class names but use camel case for class method names uh, it's up to you but it's a suggestion you know uh, a name should tell what rather than how so i am emphasizing on what you know what if a name that when you are writing a particular name if a name you are giving a name of a variable or a constant or a function name you know procedure name whatever the name that you are giving or a class name you know if you are writing object oriented programming so whatever the name that you are giving you know the name should tell what rather than how so take an example of calculate total so let's say this is a function okay so of course you know if i if i name it like this this calculate total if this function though i can imagine i can so you don't have to write many comments because looking into this name i can see that okay this function is going to calculate a total total or and return a total amount correct so or validate email address this by looking into this name i can clearly you know see that you know the input of this function is going to be one email address and then it is going to validate it and validate and then return the result either true or false you know it's a valid email address or not correct so by looking into this particular uh, uh, function names i can clearly see that what is going to happen you know inside this so that is why the what is going to happen that is important rather than how how you are calculating total doesn't matter how you are validating the email address doesn't matter but what you are doing that does matter so put a name you know to to see, to emphasize on what you are doing okay so and uh, and also avoid name something like that let's say calculate total you know so if i write something like that c a l cal total this is a function name okay so no don't don't be so lazy you know just put few words few more letters in it and then uh, it will become much more readable much more consistent that okay you know you are doing something like calculate total or validate email address okay put some some names like that it will be easier for everybody to understand and including you because uh, some of you have you know got this issue like if you write your own code maybe after 3 months 4 months or a while after so uh, after 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 a certain amount of time you also will find it difficult that okay what this code is, code is doing even this is written by you so why that is difficult for you to because you did not follow some standards but if you follow your own standard then it will not be difficult for you also to go through that okay what this particular piece of code is doing so moving to the next slide um about the readability you know there is one more aspect is that you break the large complex section of the code into smaller comprehensible modules so that is why the, uh, the functions subroutines or procedures methods comes into picture and basically you know what uh, what is is being suggested over this point is try to break your code into smaller modules which has a which is doing a particular task so if you do so if you break your large code into small small modules it will be much more readable and also much more maintainable well in future and next point is use a verb noun method to name routines that perform some operation on a given object you know for an example you know always start with a verb for an example um, you take this one the calculate total amount you know so or you know get underscore user underscore input so i'm everything is started with a verb that calculate 
then total amount so i can you know or get user input so i can i can i know that this particular function get user input is nothing but uh, what it is doing is it is getting the user uh, input all right so start with a verb so that helps a lot to understand what that particular uh, function or method is actually doing you know it, it's a good program it's a good practice